everyone listening to this video today is here to make profits. If you are doing well in the market, you are here to reinforce your tools to understand the market well. So this is going to be a session where you are going to get that information to understand where in the market cycle you are for a lot of different assets so that this tool can be used in your portfolio to look at different assets and understand how these are coming out. So this is going to be one of the assets which has already moved in in different wave structures. So it gives you the idea of how it moves. And this is another one which is completely a simple illustration there to give you that idea what you can anticipate a minimum with this one giving you the maximum possibility. So now if you know the minimum and maximum range, you can be prepared. What if the market is going to do that for you? And if it's doing that, you shouldn't be stuck in one range. Because at this time, we are getting a lot of different opinions in the market. But I would like to share some of the important perspectives. Because this is going to change your aspect, your perspective, your viewpoint towards investing. If you are a trader, this may not help you a lot in the fundamental side of it because you don't care much about fundamental instead if you are a trader on a micro scale you can you know mostly jump out or just consider what you are doing welcome to the scientific investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly this is just the chart of all coin market cap without much of a highlight here just i would like to actually share some ideas with you which you would digest properly say if you look at the base here in the rsi and then the top here in the rsi you kind of have an idea we wait trading range bound fine but you dumped now if you are looking at that we've been trading that level from a long time without getting a higher high fluctuation here in the rsi now with that being said when you jump into this area you kind of get that same here right you got that here just before the breakout of the actual wave one then you kind of had something similar by the top of wave three now the question is in between when you were entering into wave one top area you kind of had this particular range where you consolidated in a similar pattern in the macro scale right now the time scale would be different now look at this it went higher and consolidated like 300 days at first and the next one was like half of it say 153 days and the next one was like half of it again around 70 75 days so given that idea now you know one stuff okay the market is trending like this each time it move higher it do consolidate now here link consolidated 300 days because it was so early in its market cycle but you can't actually say that other assets won't be doing the same if i actually take you to a chart of zap say this particular asset have consolidated for a long time so if you are looking at one asset and saying okay this has kind of consolidated around 297 days what do you think it's going to do the next 270, uh, 297 days, the next 30 days, next 40 days? Given this idea of understanding how an asset has moved in last few, near future, now that's kind of, you know, we are looking at near future, this is going to happen because recent past, this was the case there. Now laying some of these assets are kind of giving you the understanding. Because these assets are showing you the way one correction can be to 49 days. Now, understand, this is an asset which is still moving higher. It's just consolidating. It's just slowing down. But it's giving you that idea. Wave 1 and correction is kind of this in some of the assets, right? So we just saw Zap. We just saw OMG. And these are giving you that idea. It's kind of a long consolidation range, which is similar to what we have seen here in LINK. Now, wave two was 153 for those assets. Now, not every asset would have the same period of consolidation. So there's another asset which you may be familiar with or not, but still it's 
in this asset class and it's doing something like this right now so for example it consolidated like 150 days say 141 to be precise and then moved higher so within that duration if you are looking it's kind of half of what it actually did at the first wave for link so now that's something beautiful to understand because some assets tend to do that now look at the BTC dominance we were highlighting that we should be going up retesting this area and then slowly coming back now we went there we can retested that range and now we are going down so when Bitcoin dominance is going down that's not saying Bitcoin is gonna go down that's saying the dominance in the market meaning the major money flow would be towards the altcoin market now right now we have that sustainability issue popping here and there everywhere and the world is looking at it at a time when you have a lot of geopolitical macroeconomical situation happening from the inflation towards the 2030 deal right the agenda of 2030 sustainability green future that kind of stuff everything is counting on it now as we look at these in the market what it actually means for xrp that's what we are here for right so if you are looking at this it feels like xrp is really staying strong now why do i say that Technically speaking, if you are looking at these bounces, they acted as support back in 2018. Then this range was acting as a resistance. So now this is your support resistance zone. If you take it from a long time, which is valid. Now, if you go down, you have another one here. We consolidated and remained in that range, say up to 0.33 for a long time. And then we broke above, we went up. You know the story. Now, right now if you are looking at this that range has been valid for some time and it's holding right now that's actually bullish because it's not holding as a resistance it's holding the price as a support that means it's not that magic level of support which you know pushes the price up it's like buyers tend to see this particular level as important and when the price is reaching back into that level they are interested to buy this asset and it's not just buying a little bit it's buying the supply existing in the market as you can see the long wick and going back up that means buyers actually pushed this asset last time at the bottom we had similar experience just in the opposite side of this right sellers were interested in selling this asset because we were coming from the bottom towards that range now we're coming from the top towards that range so that's why we say it support right so we may actually remain here sometime consolidating in this range of 1.9 towards one dollar maybe 1.3 dollar going up a little bit then 1.8 you know we may consolidate there but if it's taking another 30 40 50 days how many of you have the patience to ride it out because on a macro scale, when we are looking at XRP, yeah, we can see monthly is way, you know, cool to look at this monthly candle where we had a blast to the upside, then we came back down, retested this level, which was the close of two monthly and a week just in that range. Now we came back and retested that. Look at the RSI there. RSI is showing you that trend to the upside and if we get a close in this candle like this say the next month which is going to be in just three days say for example if it's actually gonna happen there to be a green candle moving a little bit up it's going to bounce from here which would be giving you that idea we are gonna bounce right and that bounce in a range is not directly going to sky high right now you are at this resistance level now here this is your support level agreed right now you have a medium term resistance range if you broke above this one cool next one comes all the way near the close here say 1.8 dollar fine now what are you actually eyeing it it's not something directly going to that 1.8 dollar mark and then bursting to the sky instead we may have a retest of this moving average because we broke that one with volume with a red shaped bar to the downside so the chances are high you will go towards this range now that would be like 1.35 and then come back retest the support of 1.05 mm -hmm. then bounce off towards 
This is what we can anticipate based on what we see on the price, RSI and the MACD. Because the RSI, if you are looking at this, it's actually trending to the uh, downside on a shorter time frame, say on a daily. Whereas when you move on to a weekly, you get like, okay, the trend is to the upside. You're still moving with the trend. Just that you are now below the average line. So when you're trending high and if you're right now below the average line, what does it actually mean? It's a buying opportunity for those who understand the market. Because in this view of a three day chart, this is the daily which we saw here. Now, this one which I'm sharing here is three day. It shows, yes, that trend line, we are at the bottom, but after breaking the base channel. Remember, once you enter into accelerating channel and get your consolidation and start picking up momentum, that's going to be the start of that wave two monstrous gain. Not everyone want to miss the monstrous gain, but not everyone are ready to go through this kind of stuff. Yeah, this is actually highlighted by Dread. Now, you know, real shout out to him because there's a perspective which we all have to understand. And this is the perspective which comes from Amazon chief agreed, but it's also been pointed out by big best giant investors in the history. You listen to Peter Lynch, you will get this. He was saying this, right? And when one of his speeches, he was like, you know, I bought that asset at uh, $7 when it dropped. And then from there, that was great. The asset went towards $1 mark. And he was still buying. Why? Because he knew that the asset still has the same fundamentals and it's doing fine as a project or a company. So after a few years, say three years or something, it went back to $50, $55. So that's not a bad deal. And if that's happening in the traditional stock market world, what can you expect in crypto? So similar story here. Looking at what is being stated out by Amazon chief, prices and opportunity, they, uh, which is highlighted by Dredd. And the statement from him was like, as I watched our stock fall from 113 towards 6, I was watching all our internal business metrics getting better and fast. So now you look at the market and say, okay, we dropped from that $2.5 trillion mark all the way downside like 60, 70 percentage in different assets. Agreed. Great. Now, is your project doing fine? Is the fundamental still the same before they drop and right now? Is the money flow coming in as huge? Are you varying? So that's all something you have to actually consider. Say for example here, you kind of have to uh, see that sellers have a little bit advantage here, 1.84 billion, whereas buyers are 1.79. Whereas here for Ether, it's now balanced like 1.1 to 1.1. Okay, we need to see who's going to win there, right? Then you come all the way down and see XRP. It's like 166 million in buys and 174 million in sell. Now, this has to be like this. One end has to be on the higher. That's how the market moves. Because unless one of them are going leveraged, they are having you know, all that kind of euphoric stuff saying, okay, this is going to go down. I'm going to short it till the zero. But eventually, price moves up and kicks their stop losses, liquidates them, provide additional liquidity into the market. And that's how the market usually works. So if you know the market and if you understand this asset, you would not actually jump in on short-term trades in this market. Now it's up to you if you are expert in doing such trades, that's great for you. But if you are not, you need to understand these fundamentals. See, Ryan kind of highlights this one and John points that one out. He kind of really shows, you know, $14, $15 fee was charged in total for sending just $4, right? So say, for example, he had to actually push in that $15 to send $4 mark. This is one of the reason the current banking structure, you know, the reserve banking structure and their payment processing methods fail. And they kind of look at small businesses and say, okay, where are these guys going? Because if they really want to hire or if they want to purchase something from abroad, it's going to be a pain in the butt for them because it's really hard for them to acquire and pay without 
you know, providing these kind of huge fees. If you really want to buy something for your business, which is worth like just four dollar, which is, you know, you only get that from outside. Say, for example, you're buying it from outside and you need to pay 15. That's not actually going well for you as a business owner. Similarly, now that's one side of it, which is the utility. And this is another side where your fiat currencies are being devalued. Now, currency debasement is happening everywhere. It's fine. You can look at different geographical region, geopolitical situation and say, okay, that's happening. But how do you actually preserve your wealth from being, you know, carried away just by the inflation? You put in a million dollar in your bank account and after a year, say, we have 100% of inflation done. Now, the value or the purchasing power of your money is half. Right? So, to preserve or to grow, you need to be in assets which can do better in the era of inflation. Because we are getting that every day. Most of the countries have started experiencing the bad effects of inflation. You know, the money printing like diary, that has, that's kind of not stopping even right now. Governments have printed like 20, 21 trillion dollars. That's not a small stuff. And when they talk about 2030, which is, you know, still like nine years from here. But you have to understand if the target is 2030, there would be different milestones by 2023, 2025, 2027, you know, a lot of different milestones. By the time governments walk towards this, they will change a lot of stuff. And for us precisely, we see the change here in payments. Because now IMF, BIS, United Nations and other supranational organizations are talking about this. They are literally talking about payments, the money and finance market moving into a green sustainable era. And it's digital. Right now, you're not in a war zone so that you're not considering complete gold. Yeah, you can use it to hedge your money, say 10, 20, 30, 40 percentage depending upon your risk tolerance. But we do differently. Anyway, but now you can look at this asset class and see how you can improve your purchasing power or what you can do to maximize your purchasing power by reducing your risk exposure. When some coins go crazy, 500x, 600x, 1000x, you can get into that euphoria, get part into it, you know, lose your money, that's great. But... Do you really want to do that? The basic concept in investing is buy low, sell high. So if an asset has already went 500x, 800x, 1000x, even a 50% drop there will not actually give you the best ROI or will not actually give you maximum ROI in this market. That 50% drop may reduce a little bit of risk exposure there, but the risk still is there. It's pertaining there, right? So, you know, pertaining to all different assets here, you have to understand risk is there. There is no one asset where you can invest without zero risk. You can invest in assets which has minimum risk, meaning their fundamentals are sound, the technicals are getting better, and they may move soon. Instead of jumping into assets which are in wave 3, you can go through this market. You can look at different assets, look at the charts, weekly, monthly time zone and understand, okay, that's great. If I enter into this asset next 3 to 5 months, it's going to do its wave 2, it's going to be fine. And if you understand like, okay, this asset has been in wave 2, it's been correcting, it's better for me to exit asset enter to wave 3. Now you're thinking like an investor. Now, you don't have to take my word on this. You can go towards reading books. You can consider Mastering the Market Cycle written by Howard Marks. You can listen to his speeches where he gives you the idea. You can listen to Peter Lynch. You know, go towards the real investors, not just the YouTubers like me and others who are just giving our opinions. If these opinions are being standing up or, you know, created from the base of these investing books, the real experts in the market, that's then valuable. So that's why you need to educate yourself first. Take 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, regularly, every day, to improve yourself as an investor. Go through books, go through summary of different books, investing. Now, you are becoming an investor. This market cycle may get extended for another year. 
fine. What if it is getting extended for another year? There would be a ton of surprise in the market. So are you ready for that kind of a surprise? Because most of them would be just looking at Bitcoin saying, okay, this has been uh, happening in this market. We are moving like this. There are a lot of different changes. Fine, all of them are agreed. But what do you see in this asset while you look at it as an investor? You need to make your point clear. And for that, you need the information to think like an investor. You need to reinforce yourself. So you can do read books. If you're not a good reader, you can still listen to the summary at least, right? Now guys, this is a market where you can make profit if you are well prepared. And sometimes if you're lucky, you'll make profits, but it won't be repeatable. There are guys which I personally know were making a good returns initially, then it went bad. Now, you need to learn from your mistakes. And if you are learning from your mistakes, that's fine. Next time, you won't make the same mistake. That's the next step further. That's how we learn the hard way. Fine. Now, in our Patreon, we try to give you guys this detail so that you don't actually have to completely go and take lessons the hard way, losing your entire money, right? Just try to follow this, understand why these are being plotted, learn the importance of support resistance zone trends waves patterns if you spend a little bit time for yourself in these you are going to become good investor once the market cycle is over here you can move into various different asset class and still make a ton of money so guys i really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please do hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel i'll meet you guys on the next video bye for now